hello and welcome my name is Amanda and today I have for you my October wrap-up I've got a mix of both audiobooks ebooks and physical books to share with you today so I'm gonna try and go in order of I think what I read first but um, I'm probably out of order just a little bit so the first book I have to share with you is A Treason of Thorns by Laura E. Weymouth. I read this book physically and I also buddy read it with my friend Eric over at Break Even Books. I'll leave his channel link down below. Um, but this book was 342 pages and I gave it a four star rating. Um, in the book we follow Vi and she lives in one of the great houses of Great Britain. And the houses have magic in them, and there's a caretaker who holds the key of the house so that they can wield house magic. Um, if the houses go too long without getting their magic out, they kind of start to turn and end up essentially destroying um, not only their kind of physical appearance, um, but also the country that is around them. So Vi's house is failing and uh, her father was the caretaker, but he is charged with treason to the king and um, it's kind of Vi's duty, I guess, or it's her desire to take care of her house and the land around her. So it's kind of her story of struggling with what she's always known and been brought up to um, think and believe and then also the kind of difficulty she has in gaining that because the king is sort of standing in her way. She's got um, her best friend Wynne throughout this book who was my favorite character and also um, the help of the princess and another main male character. So I really enjoyed this book. It was a perfect um, kind of transition into fall, uh, early October. It kind of had a little spooky vibes with the house being not necessarily what you would think it would be. Um, and it was just a great blend of magical realism, um, both your fantastical elements as well as your, um, I guess, modern timeline elements. So I really enjoyed this book. So I gave it a four star rating, um, thought the atmosphere was very great, very vivid, and the characters were great as well. Vi wasn't my favorite person. Um, she did kind of only think about the house, which I guess makes sense because that's kind of what she's been brought up to do is to put the house before anything else. Um, but I did like the character dynamics throughout this. I thought the plot was really interesting. I thought just the um, magic system behind the house was interesting as well so I did really enjoy this book. Um, the next book I've got on my stack here is Children of the Mind by Orson Scott Card. This is the fourth and final book in the Enders Saga um, though there are some other companion series that follow different characters throughout the kind of Enders game storyline. Um, I ended up reading, uh, listening to this uh, through my library. It was 13 hours and 30 minutes and I gave it a two star rating. Um, just like the last three books or this book and the two before it, um, I really didn't like the storyline of this and it was a struggle for me to even want to pick up the rest of the book. Um, I probably would have DNF this if I weren't so keen on finishing the series but I just didn't enjoy it as, like I said, as much as um, I enjoyed Ender's Game. I kind of like the setting of the um, Battlefield School a lot more than I like uh, 3,000 Years After. But in this, um, we're again following the events of Ender's Game. Um, these last three books the timeline is like one right after the other. It's basically like it's picking up right where it left off. Um, so we've got new characters. Um, we're kind of learning more about the characters we've been introduced to. And it's the conclusion to the big event or what could potentially be another genocide. So I guess it was good for what it was, um, but 
I think if I ever reread these books, I'm just going to end with Ender's Game because it wraps up the storyline pretty well, um, even though it kind of left it open-ended to where you wanted to learn more about what would happen next. These for me just didn't give me that satisfaction of finding out what happened next. Um, they were just kind of boring, to be honest. I didn't really like the characters. Um, I didn't really like the setting. Um, the plot was just... It took a while to kind of figure out what the plot even was. So, unfortunately, I didn't enjoy that as much as I was hoping I would, but that does officially wrap up one of the series that in the beginning of the year I had as my goal to finish for the year. I think I had 12 series total, and I might be at three now. Um, so I'm happy to at least have one of them complete. Uh, the next two books I have on my list are Torment and Fallen. Um, Fallen's the first book, Torment's the second book. Both of these are by Lauren Kate. I listened to them both, I believe, through my library, but it might have been through Scribd. Um, Fallen was 10 hours and 56 minutes and Torment was 9 hours and 49 minutes. I gave Fallen a 3 star rating and Torment a 2 star rating. We follow Luce who um, gets shipped off to this kind of like a boarding school um, but more for delinquents uh, where she meets a very interesting group of people and this guy that she feels like she's met before um, who's incredibly rude to her and what we find out is that uh, Luce and Daniel have a past that um, kind of follows the same plot line uh, every time they meet every 17 years. Um, Daniel's a fallen angel and Luce doesn't have memory of her past lives and previous meetings with Daniel though. Um, they try and kind of introduce this information to her in different ways to see if it'll change the outcome. Um, so basically it's a romance between a fallen angel and a mortal Though, can you really call her a mortal if she's reborn every 17 years? I don't know. Um, but basically, Torment just follows along the lines of that. Um, something is different about this time around, and so they're kind of trying to figure out what that is and keep Luce safe for the meantime. Um, both the fallen angels and the kind of, like, demons have to band together for um, the outcasts which are uh, kind of more than demons if that makes any sense. So these were all right. I think I probably would have enjoyed them more had I read them um, when I was into the Twilight but um, they've been on my shelves for a long time. I picked them up after I read Twilight so they've been on my shelves for years and years and I just wanted to read them to see if I would even enjoy them. Um, I'm gonna end up unhauling them because I would never read these again. <laughs> but there's that. Uh, the next book I have on my list is Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. Um, I've had this book for years and years and years. I don't remember when I bought it. I know I bought it from my used bookstore. Um, and I bought it because of the cover. I thought it was absolutely stunning. And the story on the back seemed really fascinating as well um, because it was about a lost book and this author who seemingly disappears. Um, but I really enjoyed this. It gave me a lot of feelings um, and similarities to The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. Even though I guess the stories are pretty different. Um, but you kind of, you have Daniel in The Shadow of the Wind who wants to protect this book. Um, and you have, what was his name, Thomas and the Goldfinch who really wants to protect the painting. So um, kind of a little bit of secret and those sorts of things going on. But this takes place in Barcelona in 1945. Um, and you have Daniel who is an antique book dealer's son. So he works in the bookstore with his dad when his dad takes him to the Cemetery of Lost Books. And he stumbles 
across a book called The Shadow of the Wind by an author named Julian Kuratz, um, who he basically can't find any information about. And this mysterious guy who is in, uh, who's a, he portrays the devil in The Shadow of the Wind, he chances upon, well, he, like, of more than chances, he intentionally runs into Daniel um, to try and persuade him to sell him his copy so that he can destroy it. So all of these copies of the book, he, or of the books that Julian Carax has written and published are being destroyed. So it's about Daniel partnering with different people along the way and trying to figure out um, why. And I really enjoyed this. It just had a very magical setting. I loved the father-son relationship in this and just the relationships in general. Um, it was a really great storyline and it was very engaging and just really enjoyable to listen to. Um, so I gave this a four star rating and I'm working through the rest of the books now. Um, all right. So the next book I have, I read on my Kindle, and that was The Glass Magician. Um, I'm blanking on the author's name right now. I think it's Charlie Holmberg. But I read the first 16 pages in September and then finished the last 196 pages in October. I give this a three-star rating. It was just a continuation of where we left off in The Paper Magician. And I enjoyed it, but not as much. Um, we follow Sienny and Emery still as they're trying to kind of figure out um, what's going on with the, um, oh, I'm blanking on what they're called, but the people who can um, manipulate kind of blood magic um, and just trying to figure out what, what happened there and why these people are suddenly after Sienny and Emery. Um, so it was pretty good um but i didn't like the plot line as much as i liked paper magician so i am interesting to see where um the last book how it wraps the storyline up i'm blanking on what that's called as well but i think it'll be pretty good and i'd like to get to that before the end of the year i also read changeless by gail Carriger on audiobook um that was 10 hours and 33 minutes i gave it a three star rating Again, it was a decent read. Um, not my favorite, but it's kind of fun to be back in that sort of steampunk world um, where you have supernatural creatures uh, mixing with regular people and it takes place in London and um, it's just kind of a fun story in and of itself, but it's a bit more adult than I kind of was expecting it to be, which is fine, um, but I just had to reset my expectations a little to be able to, I guess, enjoy the story more. Um, I think aside from one book I didn't finish, that's everything. So the last book I have is Out of Oz by Gregory Maguire. Um, this book is like 400, 534, 543 pages or something like that. I only read 212 pages of it. Um, I think I say this all the time when I talk about Gregory Maguire books. I really like the idea behind them, but it's a struggle to get through because of his word choice and just writing style. It's very um, kind of pretentious uh, because of his word choice. Like he doesn't just craft simple sentences. He like has to throw in different words that and things that just could be said so much more simply and more enjoyably for the reader to get through. Um, so I always struggle with these books and I, I just need to finish this, but, um, cause I think the ending's going to be really good. And that's the problem too, is that the endings are always really good, but getting to them, it, it's just a struggle, like I said. So I'm hopefully going to finish this for the month of November, but we shall see. Editing me jumping on here really quickly because I realized that I forgot to talk about another book that I read this month. I read After We Fell by Anna Todd on Scribd and it was 24 hours, 29 minutes. I gave it a two-star rating. 
Um, I do want to warn about on page attempted rape. Um, also, just like the other books, uh, Hardin, the main male character, is emotionally abusive. Um, he lets his anger out. He doesn't hit women, but he does hit people a lot in objects. Um, he's just a very angry person. So this follows Tessa and Hardin again after the events of After We Collided. Um, they have never-ending problems, never-ending issues, never-ending arguments. Um, one of them like looks at the toaster wrong and the other flies off the handle. So it's an extremely unhealthy relationship. And these novels are honestly just not very good, but for some reason I'm just super sucked into them. Um, and I'm going to continue on the series. So just wanted to add that before I completely closed off this video. So yeah, um, now for the outro. Um, so that means that I have finished a total of eight books in October. Um, I read 750 pages and listened to 87 hours and 22 minutes. And my average star rating was pretty low, even though I did have two four star ratings. Um, but the average was 2.9. So I'm hoping that November is better. Um, I've currently got three books that have carried over from October, um, out of Oz being one of them. No, I only have one book that carried over, but I've already got two other books going. <laughs> so I would really love to know what books you read in October, what your favorite read was, if you've read any of these books I've mentioned, anything like that. Um, so if you feel so inclined, please do let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and I will chat with you there until my next video. Bye!